Hi and welcome back to my YouTube channel and in today's video I'm going to be talking about three times that I had an encounter with a demon or perhaps ghost in my old penthouse. So let me give you a bit of a backstory. Back in early 2013 I rented an apartment in Snead Green which is in Stoke-on-Trent and basically these apartments, I didn't know this at the time, but these apartments were built on a landfill site. Now, they weren't supposed to build on there, and apparently the guy that got the land got it very, very cheap for perhaps this reason. The council insisted that the flats actually be built on stilts, just as a precaution to the nature of what the flats were actually being built on. So. The first story starts and it was early 2013 and I was the first person to move in to this brand new block of flats and I was in the penthouse which was the very top flat. Now these flats were four stories high and my penthouse began on the fourth floor and what you also need to bear in mind is there was a lift and a spiral staircase. so. If there was ever an emergency, then the lift would go out of order and you'd have to use this really wide spiral staircase. So, after roughly about a week of being in the flat, everything's been fine, no disturbances because there's been no neighbours, I know for a fact that I'm all alone, completely alone in this self-contained block of flats. and. It was roughly about three to four o'clock in the morning, something like that. And I awoke very suddenly to the loud siren of the fire alarm. And it was really loud because this building has just been built and there's loads of fire regs here now in the UK. So these, I forgot what they're called, um, beacons were like really, really loud, like very, like it's almost like piercing to the ear. So I woke up, immediately thought there's a fire because it's, I don't know why, but when an alarm goes off, I always assume it's a fire. So um, I thought at first it was myself. So I just took, because of the way the flat was laid out, the bedrooms were on the bottom, which was the fourth floor. And then there was a mini spiral staircase that went up to the kitchen and lounge and there was a mezzanine as well um, so I briefly had a quick look up there to see if it was the oven because obviously I'm the only person in the building that I know of <laughs> and there was no sign at all of any smoke any burning so I just assumed that I don't know it was just a false alarm but I knew that the control panel for the alarm was at the very bottom of the spiral staircase, not my spiral staircase, the spiral staircase that's four floors down and I would have to reset it in order to get the alarm to go off which was quite scary in itself because you've got the loud alarm going in your ear and at the same time because I'm at the very top I've got to walk all the way down the stairs without the use of the lift because the lift or the lift automatically goes out of order as soon as the fire alarm goes off as a safety precaution so anyway, <laughs> so immediately sort of opening the front door to the flat, looking around, shouting, you know, hello, is anyone there? Is just because <laughs> I was really confused because even though I'd only just woke up out of bed, I knew for a fact no one else was in the building. So what had caused something to set off the fire alarm and I just, I just didn't know what it was, so I was just thinking, what the hell is this? Um, so I've, I sort of really slowly made my way down this wide spiral staircase. The lift I could see before I went down was out of order. It was still on my floor, luckily. I think it would have freaked me out if the lift hadn't been on my floor. Um, because at the bottom of the spiral staircase, there's another door that you need a key code to get in, uh, or you can use a key card, but Obviously, if the lift had moved, then someone else would have been in the building, which they weren't. So anyway, I was making my way down the spiral staircase, really scared to death. It was three in the morning, and 
you know what it's like when you wake up you from even from a nightmare and you, you just feel startled and I, the hairs on the back of my head were standing up and I was I was going down, it was really dark and this this alarm sound, I just remember the alarm sound going off. So anyway, I finally made it to the bottom of the stairs, read the instructions on the control panel and managed to reset it. Now to the side of the control panel there was this little area map which it gave all the different zones of all the different um, fire beacons and all the different zones of where the fire beacons were and it also told you the, the codes for what area was was where so when I reset the alarm it it gave me a code that corresponded to a set of numbers on the map so you think this map it shows you floor one floor two floor three floor four and the, cra the, the weirdest thing was, is that the beacon that was set off was the one that was right outside my front door. And that just freaked me out. <laughs> it really freaked me out. And I didn't really particularly want to go back upstairs because I didn't know what it was that had set off the alarm. Had this demon or ghost or entity been been a smoker in the past life, and maybe maybe that had set off set off the alarm. But even even with just light smoking, these a lot these alarms don't just go off randomly. These they have to reach a certain temperature in order to go off. So it was just freaky, and it was just oh. <laughs> so that was the first time I ever I ever encountered a sort of demon, ghost, entity. I don't know what it was, but I do feel like that whatever that was turns up again in the next two stories. So, after that first incident, nothing particularly happened for a good 10 months after that. And in that time, I did actually meet my ex-girlfriend, Amy, and we were together for four years, but the beginning of our relationship was in this flat. Now, we used to have a app on each of our phones called Dream Talker. Some of you may be familiar with it. Very, very good app. You can set it to your sensitivity so that you aren't just recording loads of movement and scrunching and rustling through the night. So it just picks up sounds and anything that you might say while you're sleeping which can be highly embarrassing sometimes. But anyway, I'm glad that we did this one particular night. Well, I say that I'm glad, it's just very freaky. And I've, I've already made a video on this back in 2015, which I'll put on this video because it gives a clear explanation of what was going on. And also that particular phone, I don't have that phone anymore. So I don't actually have the voice recording on a device. I only have it on a recording. Anyway, <laughs> so it was the 13th of October and it was 4.09 in the morning and basically myself and Amy, Amy would usually sleep on the left hand side of the bed and I would usually sleep on the right and my phone that particular night was on my side um, Amy didn't have her dream talker on, but everything was fine, completely normal. Didn't know that night that anything had actually happened until we woke up the next morning and listened to the recordings. So <laughs> basically, when we woke up, we listened to the recording that was at 4.09 and what I can only really describe it sounds like is either a young girl or a witch at the very end of the bed. I don't know why I don't know why that comes into my head, but for some reason I just envision this entity at the very end of the bed, perhaps even a, a witch demon, if that's a thing. But it sounds more like a woman, in my opinion. But it could be it could be anything, it could be any it could be a demon taking on a voice of it of somebody else or it could be a ghost 
me. I don't know. I don't know. But all I know is what I heard and what you're about to hear. So for anyone who's a little bit sensitive towards like real life evidence or things that you can hear, then probably best to turn this video off because if you're in bed right now and you hear this noise, <laughs> it's just, it's going to make the hairs on the back of your neck stand up, put it that way. Anyway, so, this noise sounds like a Elizabethan woman at the end of the bed just staring at me and Amy and the words come out of her mouth as, don't talk, don't talk. And the weird thing was, is that you'd think, oh, it's just Amy, Amy just sleep talking. Well, just after the entity, demon, ghost, says don't talk, Amy is almost annoyed at the fact that whatever it was spoke and she has like a, ugh, she just sighs like a bit of a, ugh, shut up kind of thing. She may have thought it was me, I don't know. But the good thing is, is that you have the two differences in voice, so you can clearly tell. The good thing is, it doesn't sound like me at all. So, and when I do ever sleep talk, if ever, I hardly ever sleep talk, I'll just sleep talk in my normal voice. I won't put on a voice. And with Amy, because of the sigh after the sound, after the don't talk from the entity, then you can clearly tell the difference that it's two different people talking. So what I'll do is I'll just show the video of what we heard and my old commentary on the video and let you decide for yourself what you think it is. So it was 4.09 in the morning and just bear in mind this recording is a real recording. I was in the bed, Amy was in the bed and what this noise is I can really explain as it sounds like like an Elizabethan girl or an Elizabethan woman saying don't talk and it's like the voice is too different to mine to be like um, to be my voice and I do I don't sleep talk generally anyway unless Amy sleep talks and I'll like talk to her sometimes but it sounds like it's saying don't talk and then instantly Amy sort of does a sigh like a a pissed off kind of like moody sigh straight after but I'll play it to you and let me know what you think and I've I put I basically I plugged it in on the speakers so you can hear it so let me play it so here we go to that so this is the dream talker app don't <sighs> How weird is that? So it's only, it's very, very brief. But I'll play it again, I'll play it again. Okay, so it's only three seconds long, so listen. Don't talk. So that's Amy's voice. Don't talk. What is that? <laughs> Horrible. I just imagine a young Elizabethan girl at the end of the bed with a black face and no teeth. Don't talk. Horrible. You ready? Wait. Don't talk. See, the, see how the voice changes? It can't be Amy, it can't be me. So weird. Don't talk. It's like Amy's pissed off at the ghost or whatever's in there, man. It's so weird. Don't talk. Oh, weird, really weird. One last time. Are you listening? Don't tell me. Oh. Freaky as fuck. The third thing that happened actually didn't happen too long after the Don't Talk voice recording. And it was in the middle of the day. I can't actually recall what day it was or when it was but I'm gonna say probably a couple of weeks after the, the, the voice recording, something like that. And basically, myself and Amy were walking out of the bedroom to the mini spiral staircase that goes upstairs to the lounge, 
kitchen and mezzanine. Now I was behind Amy and as I was following Amy, she was walking a fairly swift pace. Um, she just suddenly, it's as though she just literally walked into a wall, like an invisible wall. And it was so, it was so bizarre that we just, we couldn't even reconcile on what we'd just seen. We couldn't even explain what it was. And I think it made it a little bit more, what's the word? It made it a little bit more, it felt, it felt more safe because it was in the day. It didn't feel as creepy, but it was still really freaky. So it was roughly, yeah, probably about the middle of the day, something like that. And I'm behind Amy. I follow her as she makes her way to the small spiral staircase. Um, I want to say I'm probably about a metre and a half behind her, maybe even two metres behind her. And she's walking at a fairly swift pace because she wants to get upstairs. And then suddenly, just before she gets to the bottom of the spiral staircase, boom, she just walks into an, an invisible entity of some kind. And I saw it with my own eyes. And she, like, she couldn't have even faked that. She wouldn't fake it anyway because she's not like one of them fakers but <laughs> she just looked like it was like it was as though someone pushed her nose up and she fell back and the first thing she said was oh my god did you just see that <laughs> and she says i just feel like i just feel like i've walked into a wall and i was like yeah <laughs> i saw it i saw it i absolutely saw it with my own eyes could not believe it couldn't believe what i was seeing it was uh, until you see something like that for yourself it's hard to believe other people when they say that those kind of things have happened and that's actually what makes me believe it's a demon because I think with ghosts I've not known any cases of people or heard any cases of where people have walked into a ghost genuinely genuinely Gen generally people can walk through ghosts and I think with demons they do have that ability to, to to actually physically block you so if they want to move if they want to move you or you know if they if they want to make themselves known I'll tell you what it was like it was a little bit like if anyone out there has seen Paranormal Activity 3 and I believe the babysitter goes upstairs to where the demon is and she accidentally walks into the demon and she's kind of startled and like a deer in headlights and she just walks slowly back <laughs> that's what it was like that's what it felt like the strange thing was is that we didn't we didn't really talk about it after that we just kind of brushed it off i guess maybe we didn't want to believe what we saw that was a really crazy thing is that it's it's almost only now um i'm sort of taking a step back and thinking yeah <laughs> what actually happened there and it all kind of links into the original story of something being outside my apartment and then the noise on the dream talker it all ties in but that was just so freaky if you ever watch someone just walk into a wall accidentally imagine that but with an invisible and an invisible shield <laughs> so go on youtube or something and type in somewhat you know accidents of people walking into uh, glass doors would be a perfect example because you'd be able to see but it was like that really really freaky and that's probably the only three times where i have truly believed that there was something in that flat and that there was something going on that was beyond my control that was yeah <laughs> it was paranormal and it was very bizarre and when I, when I, when i've been witness to all those things it really makes me a true believer i'm kind of as a person i'm on the fence i don't necessarily believe fully but i don't doubt it because of what's happened here so i am a big skeptic and i do like to see evidence and I do like to see things with my own eyes 
which is fine and you know I just think you have, there has to be people like that but from my opinion having seen those three things crazy <laughs> absolutely crazy unexplainable and on that note I hope that you enjoyed this video if you'd like me to do more videos like this on perhaps conspiracies I do have a good UFO story if anyone would like to hear it then drop me a comment in the comment section below also if you please subscribe and like this video it really help me out as a content creator and boost my channel and hopefully I can bring you more great videos hopefully like this one and I will speak to you guys again soon. Bye.